What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, Bunch of Crunch Army. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to be discussing something super important for all of you controller players out there, which is your sensitivity and settings. Oof. We need this one. Season four has an insane new meta with a variety of new playstyles, right? So in this video today, we're gonna be giving you all the information that you need to fit your settings and sensitivity to exactly that and maximize your performance. Speaking of improving on controller, right? If you're looking for some extra help to improve, yo, you gotta check out InstaPro over at ProGuys.com where you can have a pro player help you out with one-on-one -on -one coaching any time of the day. This is crazy on our website. Okay, we've got some of the best players who are always ready to help you out. So make sure you go and you take a look. Bunch of Crunch Army, it's about that time. Where you at? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that Bunch of Crunch. <laughs> and let's get this going. One of the raging debates among the controller community, as you already know, is linear versus exponential. Everybody has their preference, you know, when it comes to this. And honestly, it has the community pretty split. Linear and exponential work in two different ways, all right? On one hand, all right, we have exponential, which increases the speed of your cursor exponentially, aka very fast as you move it further away from the center. And then we have linear, which increases the speed in a linear way, basically correlated directly to how far your stick is from the middle, okay? So when it comes to being the best on the controller, we recommend sticking to linear. Exponential is a bit too fast paced, man, especially for most players. And it's really hard to be consistent in close range with it, as opposed to linear, which is obviously isn't perfect, but it's generally good for most situations. Some of you may like exponential better, which is cool. In which case you should obviously use it, but for the majority, it's just safe to say linear is going to work best. All right, now moving on from that, we're going to get into sensitivity. Now, sensitivity is really overcomplicated by a lot of people, and it's really just best to keep things simple when it comes to finding your perfect sensitivity, okay? So what we recommend doing for sensitivity is this, picking your starting point directly and making slow, small adjustments to it until you get that one sensitivity that just hits the spot. It could take two changes, or it could take 20. I've been there. <laughs> But this is by far the simplest and most consistent way to find your sensitivity, all right? Here we go. Make sure your use advanced option setting is on as well, as we're gonna get pretty spicy with this stuff, okay? All right, here we go. Starting off, just make sure that all of your extra boosts and unnecessary settings are turned off. Head up to your main sensitivities and just start them at 40% for X and Y and 2.0 for your building and editing sensitivity multipliers. Then simply just hop into some 1v1s and just really just spend some time just free building, all right? And just go through the process of adjusting it until you feel really comfortable. Another form of sensitivity that's worth noting is your ADS sensitivity. On a controller, ADS is obviously pretty important and the process is gonna be pretty similar to your usual method for finding a sensitivity. Set your ADS sensitivity to 15% and simply hop into your favorite aim map or course and just adjust it it like how you would with your normal sensitivity. Until you feel both comfortable and confident with it, this process might take a little bit longer, right? But it's absolutely worth the time, okay? Another huge debate among the controller community is whether it's best to use the claw grip to use paddles on the back of your controller or just simply play with the normal grip with the normal controller. All right, I'm gonna be totally honest with everybody, all right? It's really up to you. When it comes to both cost and pure efficiency, using claw is probably going to be your best bet. If you don't wanna bother using claw and you just wanna you know, keep it price effective, I get it. You may struggle a little bit more to reach a high level, but non-claw on a normal controller is still an option, okay? And if you're willing to dish out a decent amount of money for the best overall experience, then paddles might be your best choice. This obviously really comes down to a lot of factors. So our biggest piece of advice is really just to pick one option and just stick to it. Try and avoid switching between them a lot and just pick the one that you're comfortable using long term, okay? If you do that, then this shouldn't be much of an issue for you. So another setting that's absolutely critical for controller players is your dead zones. Dead zones are pretty simple to really figure out and really shouldn't take you too long, okay? So to determine your dead zones, we recommend trying to get them down as low as you possibly can without stick drift. <laughs> 
So set your dead zone to 5% and just keep going up slowly until you don't feel any more stick drift, which is basically your crosshair moving on its own. Some of us might be fine around 6 or 7%, while some might have to go up to 12 to 15 before it feels good. Overall, let me just say this, like keep this as low as you can without feeling any drift. All right, guys, so real quick, before we hop into your binds, make sure to check out ProGuys.com if you're looking to improve, where we actually have on-demand coaching from pro players. It's really crazy. Our vibe review service, which can really save you time and help you improve faster is so dope you guys gotta check it out it'll take you to the next level our coaches help you with everything from game sense to mechanics to settings and so much more check it out when you can all right moving on to what a lot of you guys are probably waiting for we've got your controller binds now just like a lot of things your binds really come down to your own preference but what we can do is give you some recommendations and tips to make your binds as good as possible you guys ready all right here we go first off the biggest thing that you want to do with custom binds is make sure there's just no delay in your editing meaning you don't have to hold down circle or another button to start your edit and also make sure you're using double edit binds so that you can be as fast as possible one of the most common double binds combinations for controller players is left stick to start the edit and right stick to confirm or the other way around confirm edit on release as popular as it is really just isn't the best option for controller players especially with how easy it is to use double binds second make sure that these settings are all on when it comes to your binds sprint cancels reloading off sprint by default on vibration off build immediately builder pro on enable foot controller off these are all intended for different reasons, but these are pretty much all the settings for controller players that should absolutely have on or off. All right, third up, make sure your binds include every action that you can perform. What I mean by this is that, you know, a lot of us have settings that don't allow us to do certain things like repair and other seemingly small actions, right? Sometimes you'll see a prompt when you're missing a setting that says something along the lines of, hey, you need to attach this to a bind, but it won't always be that way. So just make sure that your binds allow you to perform every action. If you have paddle on your controller we strongly recommend using one paddle to jump so you don't have to take your thumb off your right stick to jump and just using your other paddle for switch mode so it's easy to switch between builds and edits fast on claw you have a lot more flexibility so you can just try to experiment and just adjust everything a bit more than non claw players Finally, all right, another thing that we like to mention is that when it comes to settings, we strongly recommend looking at the settings of some pro players to see, you know, if they do anything different than you do. Obviously, pros are the best of the best. I get it. So it's worth looking at, you know, what they do and not really copying it, but really just taking inspiration or just seeing if they do anything that, that might fit you. So if you ever feel like you're struggling, you can search something like pro controller binds or pro controller settings and try out some stuff that you find there. You never know what you might find, guys. And using a setting or two that you can learn like from a pro player may be exactly what you need and don't forget that you can always ask one of our pro controller coaches on proguys.com who can give you guys tailored advice and settings that really cater to you as a player All right, so with that said, that's gonna be all for today's video, but I wanna do a recap. All right, start by determining your preference between linear and exponential. We recommend linear, but you should use whichever you like better than using the starting point method to find your best sensitivity. Then optimize your dead zones to be as low as possible without drift. Set up your binds and settings using the things that we discussed, and really just feel free to check out some pro players binds and settings for inspiration if you feel like you're stuck at any point, okay? All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy i was born to motivate you that's right i was born to help you get to the next level man not only in this game but also in life i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh once again make sure to check out proguys.com to find your coach to really really help you and uh make sure you like the video sub to the channel and bunch of crunch army where you at <laughs> keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going